can't follow. I mean, I just can't. I mean, it's so. It used to be so lonely at the Pinnacle. I can't deal with that. You can I mean, handle that, it. That, that, you know, when when you get unsolicited cheering like that, it's yes. tough to deal with. Yeah. But I think you can work it out. <laughs> oh, you're nuts, Ed. Yeah. Welcome back, and uh, we want you to know that we're going to introduce New York to you. Uh, the uh, Las Vegas East, as we call it, has some really marvelous people there who are anchoring our New York feed, as it were. Julie LaRosa, one of my marvelous team. The team, of course, comprised of Ed McMahon, David Hartman, Chad Everett, and of course, Julie LaRosa. Uh, this year, we have given Julie LaRosa two lovely ladies to help him anchor the New York feed, Virginia Capers and Lainey Kazan. Would you all welcome Julie LaRosa, Lainey Kazan, and Virginia Capers in New York at the Hotel Plaza. part of the country. Now, are we on network as it was intended? I beg your pardon? Yes, we, we are. are. All right. Are we ready to uh, present uh, Miss Kit? Having you three folks. Yes, indeed. And one of the guys in the are. studio had mentioned, now, <laughs> that, uh, well, when we talk New back York? and forth of New York, it's, it's going to be marvelous. The, the wildest. Say, you know, Virginia, we were, it's an odd thing, but we have this watermelon beginning. farm in Newark, and uh, uh, can do we were hoping that you'd make an order. And Laney, uh, you know those wonderful... Uh, Laney, I say those one. You know the new 18-hour uh, bras? We were discussing... Um, uh, Lainey, uh, Julie? Is somebody trying to talk over? No, not much. Oh. Someone talking to us? Uh-uh, no, no, it's okay, go right ahead. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Hi! Oh, there you are. <laughs> Wonderful. Hi, Lainey. Hi, darling. How Hello, are you, Julie. Jerry? How are you, Jer? Okay, hi, you Virginia. You look sensational. <laughs> Good morning, my darling. How can you, are you? Can you see me there? No. no! Oh, God. Just sound oh, great. Right well, you, re you remember what I look like? How do you feel? I feel good. You remember Claire Trevor? Just picture her a little shorter. <laughs> How you doing in New York? We're doing great. Pretty good. How you doing, Julie? The truth. The truth is, we miss you greatly. <laughs> well, we were very upset and sorry we didn't make the first cut to New York. We've had uh, an unusual share of grim gremlins this year, but hopefully it's going to be straightened out from here on out, Jerry. Uh, and Julie, would say hello to David, who has done magnificently, and Chad, and and Mr. Ed McMahon. Well, we, you know, we're doing live television. I think that people tend to forget that live television is a very courageous thing today. Everything's pre-recorded. We're taking some pretty strong chances going east sure. to west, west to east. We sure. sure are, Jerry. Isn't it amazing yeah, right. at how they agree with everything I say? Look at how darling they are. Isn't that marvelous? Oh, it's early, well, it's when early. you tell the truth, what can happen? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The truth, honey. Whoops. See what Julie. <laughs> yeah. The truth, honey. Whoops. See what Julie, happened. you have a marvelous production number there you're going to introduce, haven't you? Yes. As a matter of fact, I did it once before, but apparently it didn't go through, so we're going to do it now because it can only come from New York, Jerry. The marvelous Eartha Kitt, starring in Timbuktu, in a number only she can do in her fashion, in the beginning, woman. Amen. Eartha Kitt. How was that, Jerry? She was working very quickly. <laughs> she zipped right by the three of you. Aha. Uh -huh. Come <laughs> on. 
It is here in Scroll that in Africa, from the Niger to the Nile, the gods of old were goddesses. And women had wit and wisdom, as well as style. So whence this masculine nonsense? But Adam and his absent rib. Can it be conspiracy? Man's oldest, boldest, most fantastic fib. In the beginning, a woman, and sometime thereafter, man. And then came the moment man looked at woman, and that's when begetting began. In the beginning, virgin and from out of nowhere boy at virgin surgeon boy merged with virgin and from that virgin joy scrap as a pap those are other tales tales that males came first they are the worst Brad instead earth mother tales men have been menaces ever since Genesis, just as it's chaptered and burst. Uh, out of the primal chaos, out of the swell and swirl, rose a resplendent, virtue invested, full but firm-breasted girl, predating Adam, we had a madam, human, long before sinning in the beginning, woman. The flip, fictitious tale, vicious tale, that's what my advice is. For a more propitious tale, delicious tale, as to how Venus, a star in Isis, always came through in a crisis. Back in the time primeval, in that pre glacial glade, sprang up the creature. Fragile feature, man a little labeled maid. Lost a fruit, possessing a cute acumen. Winsome and winning in the beginning. Woman, woman. That's woman. Hey, that was nice, Eartha. Ed, that was nice. That was good. Hey, how about that, Ed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was good, Ed. That's hey, some Ed. nice group of people. I like them a lot. I don't mind telling you. Okay, there's New York, and there's the lovely Virginia Capers, and the lovely Lainey Kazan, and the gorgeous Julie LaRosa. <laughs> All right. Hello, Jerry, again. Hello. You know, when I was... Yes? Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Hello. I wanted to tell you, when I was growing up in Brooklyn, you know, yeah. some of my favorite reading was Often Annie. And today, some of my favorite theater going is the Broadway hit, Annie. And darling, here is the star of that show now, Shelley Bruce, and with her, the wonder dog, Sandy, bringing us tomorrow. Oh, that's nice. Did you like that? Uh, let's welcome the Broadway company of Annie, everybody. Here they come.
just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none when I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely I just pick out my teeth Bravo. <laughs> I like that. They skate nice, those kids. What's up? Jerry, we're supposed to do the, 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 the film now. Huh? You know, I'm supposed to do that, that film, the chairman of the board. You're going to do chairman of the board by, with film? Yeah. Why can't I do it live? No, no, you can't do it live. We've got it on film. What do you mean I can't do it live? We, why? Well, I, why, is it better on film than live? Well, I think it is. Well, why can't we do it on film and live? And you, now you want to know how you do that. Are you going to say... Yeah, how do you do that? Well, you see the letters here? You get rid of those letters. Like that, see? Now you see this little box I have here? Haha, you didn't know about that box. Now tilt down a little bit so you see the box. Yeah, now, see, I have a film chain here. That's my connecting switch from film to live. Now, you run your film. When I'm ready to come live, I hit the switch. When you're ready to take it back, I'll give it back to you. You really mean that? Well, look, what could happen? So they'll find out where we live and we'll make a citizen's arrest on one another. Go ahead. It's good so far, film.
You did your part very well. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. Okay, we are going to talk to, uh, you, we go, you go, you're going to hear from, I should say, my darling friend in New York, Julie LaRosa. Julie, yes, take Jerry. it with your lovely bookends. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bit, that chairman of the board bit. It's Thank one you. of my favorites. Thank you. Brilliant. Right now, Brilliant. we're going to go back to Broadway. The 1950s brought us face to face with a lot of problems and certainly a lot of pleasure. The Broadway hit Grease captures it all. And if you've only seen Grease once or twice, uh, to be in, you had to have seen it at least three times. It's one of the great shows ever happened to Broadway, still running after, I think, 104 years. <laughs> Some kind of production number from New York. Very nice, guys. All right, right now we have two very good friends of MDA, Patty Duke Austin and her husband, John. Thank you. Thank you. My, uh, my wife is a vice president of MDA, and she's worked with the association since she was a teenager. And she's made me part of the MDA team, too. And we'd like to show you just a few pieces of the life-enhancing equipment that the association provides to patients to ease their burdens. We're doing a great deal to relieve suffering among our patients, to prolong their lives and increase their productivity. For instance, this is an ordinary leg brace for adults. It's used early in the course of many neuromuscular diseases in order to improve and prolong walking. It costs uh, about $300. And, uh, this is a double long leg brace attached to a pelvic band for a child. It's prescribed later in the course of progressive disability to provide support for weak muscles around the knees and the hips. And it costs MDA about $650. Now this is a hydraulic lift and it's a very important piece of equipment. Uh, yeah, it sure is, because it's most helpful for moving seriously handicapped persons to a bathtub or in and out of, of a bed or a car. Now, how much does that cost? Uh, hydraulic lifts cost now, uh, cost the association about $450 each. And uh, we all know how this wheelchair functions, but uh, how much does that cost? Uh, a standard wheelchair like this would also cost about $450. And uh, this? is a scoliosis jacket. It's used to correct spinal curvatures so that a person's heart and lungs can be kept functioning as normally as possible. And this orthopedic device can cost as much as a thousand dollars. And we should mention, honey, that uh, MDA clinics don't pass these costs along to the patients. 
These appliances and many more are provided free of charge and no means test is ever required. That's a very important point, honey. And because of the generosity of the viewers of this telethon, the association has been able to dramatically expand its patient service program in many areas. Uh, you'll be looking at a film now which will show you some of them. There, uh, there are respiratory devices uh, to relieve uh, life-threatening breathing problems. Then you see there the hydraulic car lift, which helps the patients in and out of vehicles, uh, which is uh, incredibly necessary for their mobility. Then uh, the construction and installation of ramps for patients in, wheel in wheelchairs. Now these and expanded physical and vocational therapy programs are MDA services that you viewers made possible. Keep in mind that there's never a charge for diagnosis and treatment at any of MDA's nearly 200 clinics. Right, honey. Nor is there a charge for the wonderful summer camp program the association provides to patients. Last year, we sponsored 92 camp sessions in 35 states and Puerto Rico. MDA camps provide healthful recreation and really enrich the lives of our patients. And they're not just for youngsters either. MDA is providing more and more adult camps, which bring help and fresh hope to older patients. One of them, uh, Mrs. Betty Spring of Friona, Texas, recently expressed, expressed her appreciation to Jerry. You'd be amazed what transformation takes place within a couple of days at MDA camps for adults, she wrote. It's absolutely stunning for us to realize there are others with similar problems. We no longer feel alone, not anymore. We share our feelings, frustrations, and hope. We also swap ideas on how to deal with our limitations. Most of all, because of you, Mr. Lewis, we get away from our daily lives, and the camp attendants make darn sure we're kept busy and having a good time. My dear, I think that... <laughs> After what they've just seen and heard, our viewers have to fully understand why their wholehearted support of Jerry's great effort is so vital. Ladies and gentlemen, please, Make the phones ring and be generous with your pledges. Thank you. Thank you, Austins. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank you. you, Patty. Very and Jerry, nice. it's been a while. It seems like it's been all night since we've heard a drum. Oh, Would a you timpani. love to hear a drum? Oh, a timpani. Let's go. Do it. That's nice. That's yes. nice. That's nice. I've been looking for that number. Oh, yeah. That's nice. I like that. That's terrific. Okay. You want to hear terrific? If you remember earlier in the show, I alluded to a healthy child. He is a healthy child. She was a healthy child some years ago when she first did our show. And just instinctively, I was moved to talk to the people about what a marvelous thing that a child is healthy. And we got such a tremendous response from our audience because so often a telethon or any fundraising organization will impose the crippled child on an audience and it becomes somewhat distasteful after a while or r rather than distasteful, maybe an audience will blanch a little because it gets heavy and, and a lot of people can't deal with it. And I decided to show the audience a healthy child. This child was not only healthy, but she was some kind of a performer. And we received tremendous amounts of mail. That moment that took place between the healthy child and myself, and then she wrapped it up by really stopping this show with her voice. She's with us again this year. She's slightly, slightly larger than she was that year. She's grown into a full-bloom, beautiful lady. We'd like you to welcome her again, the lovely and talented Miss Carrie McDowell, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Welcome back, my darling. Thank you. I am very happy to see you. I want you to know that what I just told the audience, I hope you heard, we received so many lovely letters about how beautifully you sang and how nice it was that we talked about 
what's best for children and that we want them all to be healthy and so on. You remember that year, I'm sure. Yes. And we stood right about where we're standing now. I was dressed I a was little littler. More. Yeah, you were littler and I was dressed more appropriately for that particular time. But you have grown beautifully. You're singing better than ever. Thank you. I heard your tapes. They were really lovely. Thank what you. Are you. What are you going to do for us tonight? This morning, I should say. Um, a medley of songs. A medley. Are we ready, Mr. Uh, uh, Egglash? Just about. We're passing out the music because uh, we didn't know you were going to be here until about seven months ago, so the orchestra is having a little problem, you see. You know what I would like you to do? Let me hear you say Jerry in there. Jerry? Now say Jerry. Jerry. Yeah. Would you, would you feel more comfortable without the wire? And I think uh, that will be a better microphone for you. And I'll take this and I'll put it in the car, okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Once again. The Lipton spotlight falls on the very lovely and talented Miss Carrie McDowell, ladies and gentlemen.
served in the 26 years that they have been with us on this program. This is the eighth time, I should say, I'm sorry, this is the eighth time that this group has appeared on the telethon. They come from the area of Washington, D.C. They've been entertaining to raise funds for musculature for over 20 years. The Singing Cedars, directed by Roland Cumberland, bring us a Broadway spectacular. Ladies and gentlemen, the vocal group of the Tall Cedars. Thank you, gentlemen. have a real cheer. These people always let me talk around with them and they're really terrific. They work very hard and for 20 years they've helped us. Thank you, my darling. Gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> All right. Yo. <laughs> Wait, what's going on here? <laughs> Look at these suckers! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, look at they all look half bag, yo. <laughs> I don't believe Artie must be fainting from this shot. <laughs> look at Artie in the boot. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, suckers must be tired. Bags under everybody's eyes. <laughs> all my relatives, I'm so glad to see you all. I got some pictures of me as a baby here if anybody wants any. <laughs> I'll pass them out. <laughs> okay, let's all watch them now. Let's have a big hand for the unknown comic, Murray Langston. <laughs> <Yeah. Yo. laughs> I'm telling you, I just flew in from Los Angeles. What a bummer. I got air sick and nobody knew. <laughs> All right, folks, let's get started. <laughs> what do you get when you cross an elephant and a rhino? <laughs> Elephino. <laughs> what do you get when you combine 50 female pigs with 50 male deer? <laughs> 100,000 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm starting to sweat now. Just a minute. <laughs> Ooh, this is weird. I tell you what, folks, since you're such a good crowd, let's start out with a little ventriloquism. All right. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Sad sack. <laughs> hey, where you from? Baghdad. <laughs> Hey, Sadzak, you doing any impressions? Are you kidding? Ruff, 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 ruff. Hey, what was that? A doggy bag. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Little sucker's pretty good, ain't he? <laughs> hey, you got any jokes for us? Yeah, how do you make an Eskimo family stick together? I don't know how. With igloo. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're saying, does the unknown comic do any impressions? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding, ladies and gentlemen? My impression of the first man to land on the sun. Ooh. <laughs> From the movie The Exorcist, my impression of Miss Linda Blair. I know you're saying, does he do any magic? I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to notice that I have here an empty bag. I'm talking about this one. 
I am now going to take, ladies and gentlemen, this white handkerchief. I'm going to place the white handkerchief into the empty bag. It's going. It's going. It's gone. I'm now going to take this black handkerchief and put the black handkerchief into the empty bag with the white handkerchief. Going. Gone. I am now going to blow the magic potion into the bag. <laughs> Say the magic words, Abby Kazan, Lainey Kazan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the black handkerchief is now white. The white one is now black. Oh, <laughs> just a minute, my socks are coming down. <laughs> All right, that was nothing. Notice I have in this pocket, ladies and gentlemen, I have a red handkerchief. I put the red handkerchief back into the pocket. I now pat on the pocket. The red handkerchief is now transferred over to this pocket. <laughs> I put it back in this pocket. I pat on it. It is now back in this pocket. <laughs> oh, I know you're all probably saying he has two handkerchiefs, right? <laughs> Wrong. <All> right. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think, I think it's only time to let you folks see what I really look like under this bag. Jerry, what do you say? Shall I let them see what I look like? Yeah. All right, here it goes. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I'm, sorry. I'm glad I'm talking to nobody. I'm telling Bob. We are back at the Sahara Hotel Live in Las Vegas, watching the stars come out. Our star, Jerry Lewis, is here. And as we join him, boy, have I got some good news. Lou Brown, can you hear me? Let me have a tip. And a roll. Jerry, look at this. Roll it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's lovely. That's lovely. That's nice. It's 1030. Hi, everybody. We're on a full network. Super amount of people. More than 90 some million. And we've got five strong hours of hard work to go. Five hours to go. And I must reiterate what we have alluded to before in the early portions of our program. And that is that the People of the United States have helped us build and structure the finest research facilities, research facilities in the world that will ultimately find the cause and the cure of this dread disease. They will, in that process, come up with some marvelous information, information that we will project and present to you, ladies and gentlemen, on this program in the next couple of hours, will be staggering and mind-boggling for you to see and believe that human beings that were given up for dead will stroll out on this stage and touch your hearts and your minds and your imagination and your hope and your dreams and your belief and faith in God and all good stuff. So we got a lot to come, including entertainment, some, some marvelous people that have been with me. Uh, to uh, start to pay tribute to a man like Ed McMahon would be ludicrous on my part because you don't pay tribute to that man. You just hang out with him. And I'm smart enough to know that Good people rub off on you. And if you ladies and gentlemen are suspicious of the fact that I might have picked up a little class in the last year or two, it's because I hang out with people like that. I don't get a great deal of information or humor from them, but class, yes. Where is that dummy? Right here. <laughs> I take it all back. I was hoping he was another place. I take it all talking back. Talking about me, I was so interested in hearing what nice things you were saying I about someone. I love you. I say it about you when you're me. not around. I couldn't believe you it. You want to hear about David Hartman, though? Tell no, me he's about not David, here. Yes. He's much too tall for his age. Yeah, he is. Yes, yes. He's and taken tallness as far as it can go. Yeah. You remember when he was at the home for the tall? Yes, I do. Yes. We did a benefit there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we have a thing to do right now. We have. Yes, we have a spectacular production number. 
And this production number, back me up a minute, Larry. This production number for my kids. Oh, yes. This year marks Mickey Mouse's 50th birthday. And Mickey... Oh, don't treat it lightly. Don't treat it lightly. That little, that little mouse built Orlando Disney World, Disney Lo World where, where Khrushchev went, and made plenty crazy people. You know what I mean? Plenty crazy people. I mean, he ri it's like uh, the, like, yeah, who? No, we're not all 50, I'm 52. Wait a minute, how did you become my part? What do you mean we're all in our 50s? Well, I'm, I'm 52. I'm squeezing the hell out of the 50s and you're getting in there, pal. Hold it a second, what? I don't hear any commitment. What? I see hedging, I, I, I detect a vague pronouncement. No, I told you I was going at the legal speed limit. You mean you've hit 55? 55, yes. You're kidding. And sailing right through. It's amazing the difference in our appearance. You're a Gentile, I'm Jewish. Is the skin, what is it, the quality, the upbringing? <laughs> Because I don't look the We never too. Congo. <laughs> That's better. This year marks Mickey's 50th birthday, and Mickey and his friends have come to celebrate, performing a medley of Disney tunes. Here once again is the fabulous Carol Lawrence with her favorite characters from the world of Disney. Would you welcome the lovely Carol Lawrence? Hello, dear. Hi. I think that because... Because Walt Disney... How come you're talking and you're not holding? I'm holding and talking and you're talking and not holding. It's Disney magic. You must have stuff underneath there. Somewhere, we can't talk Could about it. Could I go over and see? <laughs> <laughs> it ain't oh. on your back. No, it's not on my back. And it ain't on your bottom part. No. So it must be in your breast area. Oh. <laughs> Jerry. Oh, no wonder our mic man is running around going, what a wonderful show. <laughs> okay, darling, take it. I just want to say, Congratulations on the telethon because it's doing so well for Thank all you. your kids. And because Walt Disney has made childhood happy for all of us for so many years, I thought it appropriate to bring some of that musical magic all the way from the magical kingdom to Las Vegas for you, Jerry, because we love you and we care. Are you ready? Thank you. Zippity doo da, zippity. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine. Get my way, zippity doo dah, zippity a. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, all seven in a row. Hi ho, hi ho. Whistle while you work. Put on a grin and start my limbs and whistle while you work. Just hum a merry tune. Just do your best and take a rest and sing yourself a song. When there's too much to do, don't let it bother you. Forget your troubles, try to be just like that cheerful chickadee. Whistle while you work. Come on, get smart, tune up and start to whistle while you work. I'm late! I'm late! For a very important date. Can't stop to say hello, goodbye. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. When I wave, I lose the time I save. My fuzzy ears and whiskers took me too much time to shave. I run and then I hop, hop, hop. I wish that I could fly. Wait a minute, that's not as impossible as it sounds. Why, all you have to do is think of the presents you bought. Any merry little thought. Think of Christmas, think of snow, think of sleigh bells, here we go, like reindeer in the sky. You can fly, you can fly, you can fly. Think of the happiest things, that's the way to get your wings. Now you own the candy store, look, you're rising off the floor. Don't wonder how or why You can fly, you can fly Way up high in the sky You can fly Oh, look at all those lovely stars
mean, have you ever seen so many chimneys? Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chimney. A sweep is as lucky as lucky can be. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chimney. Good luck will rub off when I shake hands with you. Or blow me a kiss, and that's lucky too. Now as the ladder of life has been strung, you may think of sweeps on the bottom most rung. Though I spend me time in the ashes and smoke, in this whole wide world, there's no happier Donald, you are so silly. But you know, there's a crazier song than that. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Um, da 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 Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious Today, the best is the one that's so full of hope and courage, and it was sung by Jiminy Cricket to Pinocchio. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are, anything your heart desires will come. not your birthday. You know it isn't your birthday. It's Mickey's 50th birthday. Ow, ow, and we have a friend. Towel, towel. Let Donald go over there. Let him go over there. Come here, Donald. What's the matter? It's not Donald's birthday. But 
funny to me because everybody is making a fuss over me too. I love Donald Duck. Well, sir, I love you, Donald. I love you, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, Feel better? Okay. I love you, Tom. I love you. Oh. Can we have a... Uh, everybody sing happy birthday. Happy we birthday have, to you! We have a wonderful cake, and it's right over there. Would you help everybody? Oh, well, that's oh, Let's come over on. here and sing happy birthday to Mickey. Everybody, are you ready, Ron? Um, happy birthday to you. Quarter to 11 in the morning in Las Vegas. A quarter to 11, we're coming up to 11 o'clock, which puts us at four and a half hours away from the closing of our program. Louie, are you ready, Louie? Can I have my orchestra, please? Are they coming? Okay. We answer a request. Ladies and gentlemen, a request from a very special someone in our audience. This is not the norm, nor do we uh, usually follow this procedure. This is kind of special. The request comes from my dear friend, Mr. Bob Sampson, who likes this. We can smile. We can smile. Louie, you still vamping? Why can't I have the band so I can hear it? Hey, Louie, bring the band down here. It would be nicer. Let them play while you're moving the band down here. Why'd they stop? What else they got to do? While they're riding, they could play. Yeah, why don't you play while you're riding? Let the band go. Let the vamp go. We did this song in the second hour of our program, so the orchestra is still desperately trying to remember how it goes. Bring it down, Pat. trench do a trench go ahead Louis look at that old man 69 years old you know we can't smile without you can't smile without you we can't laugh can't sing unless we hear those telephones ring we feel sad then you call feel glad when you call if you only knew what we're going through we just can't smile without you Once had a plan Then I began to follow it through Isn't it great that now you're part of a team Part of a dream Soon to come true So you see we can't smile without you Without you, we can't laugh, can't sing unless we hear those telephones ring. Feel sad when you call, feel glad when you call. If only you knew what we're going through, we just can't. Oh, one thing we know, this is a show.
voice we hear Those telephones ring Feel sad when you call Feel sad when you call It's perfectly clear to make it this year We just can't do without you Jerry, I have something that'll make you smile. Tell Let me. me hear that drum. Oh, yeah, Tim, Tim, Tim. Oh, now that's a nice way to finish that number. Do it. Oh, yeah. I love those. You, got, you have wonderful little innovations going there. Ed. See that? You like that? Stay oh, with yeah. us all through the night. We're up to 13275, and we're counting on you. More stars to see, more entertainment, and more surprises. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the star of our show, Jerry Lewis. Oh, well, I can handle rejection. We welcome you back to some 90 million people that are watching our, our love-in. I want you to pay particular attention, if you will, please, ladies and gentlemen, to the Helbros Watch tote board. The Helbros Watch Company is the official timekeeper of the Jerry Lewis Telethon. Larry Pergosin has been with us for a lot of years, and they are a company of people who are unlike a lot of the other corporate sponsors, unlike in that they hardly can get into moving their canisters, as it were, or their people to the large degree that 7-Eleven does, or McDonald's, or 7-Up, or Sara Lee, because they are comparatively a small company. They therefore contribute practically all the dollars they can raise as a contribution by building our beautiful tote board here at the Sahara in Las Vegas and 213 more just like it across the country. To Larry Pergosin and the Hellbrose Watch Company, we thank you for the dignity of that, for the contribution of it, and for the love that we know that came with it. Thank you so much. Okay, Jerry, it's time for you to get that thank heaven for 7-Eleven feeling once again. I love it. It's a family kind of feeling Everybody shares Everybody pulls together And everybody cares Working hard for all my kids Across the USA 7,000 old thank heaven stores Are in the fight to stay who asked that boy at the piano to make a solo when I'm singing? <laughs> Great, I'm singing a nice note. Hopefully it will be in the clear. And that boy at the piano takes a solo. A boy like that will touch your brother. Oh, uh, yeah, Larry, you got something for me? Huh? What? You do? You're kidding. Are you sincere? Would you like... Speak up. Come over here. Kiss my ring and then speak. <laughs> Wait, lean down, get down. You take the Nina and the Pinta and the Santa Maria and go discover something, you fakakta idiot. There's <laughs> a wonderful guy. What's his name? This guy, this working. Okay, we have some marvelous... Are you two working together? Oh, you're kidding. No, shopping centers? No, we have entertainment. Who said? Oh, Arthur. They're not here. We can't... Well, will you get over here and call them? 
Well, get, here, now Bob, here. get over there. Rick, come over here. No, don't bump into Bob. No, no. Oh, look at this. How did I get screwed up with this kind of crew? Introduce Bob, if you can, and Rick to Buck. Buck oh, and Mel. Buck, do Buck you know say Mel hello to Bob. And Rick, say and hi Mel, to Bob. say hello to Rick. Say Rick, hi, say hello Rick. to Mel. Here's hey, Larry, Bob. Larry, get Bob, over and yo. say hello to Mel. Larry, and Rick. did you say hello to Buck and Rick, Mel? Come here. Do you know yeah. the guys? Who are, hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, you know you have Bob? A chance? Hey, Billy, come here. Yeah. Kenny. Come on over and say hello. You know hello. Bobby? Yeah, Bobby, say hello to Kenny. I'd like you to meet the little woman. Hi, hon. Hey, kid. Do you know my son, Anthony, Bob? Get over here. Don't hurt him. He'll sit on you and you're dead for a year. Look at this nonsense. Okay, hit it. 124. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Want to see me lead the band? You got it. One, two, one, two, three, four. That's it. Okay, now. You met these folks before Buck Savinfield, Mel Simon, the setting Hello, Buck, free shopping Mel. center. Let her have you back. Program. Let's get on with it. Jerry, I know we're short on time. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> Get on. But the money in our shopping centers of Melvin Simon and Associates couldn't... <laughs> You're making a fool of yourself. <laughs> you want a lit bush? Come on. <laughs> the... Who the... said lucky? <laughs> Gracefully falls on Johnny Lee and his smorgasbord. <laughs> Well, hey, good looking. Yeah, did you call me? What you got cooking? I was about cooking something up on me. Yeah, I'm free and I'm ready. So we can go steady. I was about keeping steady company. I got a hot pot for and a two dollar bill. I know a spot right over the hill. But there's soda pines and a dancing street. You want to have fun? Come along with me. Say it, hey. Sweet baby, don't you think maybe we can find us a brand new recipe? Come on, I'm real big up. I need a temp and this change. Roll it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beverly, you brought us good luck, Beverly. Okay, you're going to hear something now. I have to depress you. My role is the following. To be an MC, to head up an organization, to be the national chairman, to be crazy, to work in sneakers in a tuxedo, to make faces at Matthew, sing songs for Bob Sampson, kick him in his wheelchair, be irreverent, do all the things I believe I must do, get angry, get happy, and introduce good talent. I try to do that all so that we end up providing for you what we promised all year long. When you can get talent like this, to contribute their time and join you, it really makes stuff worthwhile. Not that this talent is any different than any of the other talent, 
But he is a man who was working desperately hard on a very tight schedule. And while doing the Mike Douglas show, I imposed on him because I am working 365 days a year, and if I can get you, I'm going to get you. And that's whether it's a corporate sponsor like Je John and Jerry Thompson, or it's just a performer who may like very much to go on a Labor Day holiday with his family, and this man might have wanted to, but not after I had him for five minutes. I had him for five minutes, and he's here. His family did not go on a vacation on Labor Day, because he's here. And he is not only the winner of three Grammys, and has been nominated eight times in the last 12 years, but we'll never find another love like you, cause when you hear you've heard it all, it's Lou Rawls. What am I gonna tell you? Here he is. Venetian blind. Louis. It's your blue view, but here's the tip. Yeah. Here's the number. Yeah, do it. Do it. Hold it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 13 on the end. 13 on the end. <laughs> five, five and five. Oh, nuts. That's only 11, you stupid idiot. It's only 11. That's what happens when you quit school in the second year of high school. No, no, you got a 13. There's Where? There's a 10 and a 3. 13. Where? See the zero? Oh, leave me alone, will you? Wait a minute. See the one? That one? Wait a minute. There it is. 13. Oh. Mm. <laughs> He'll do anything to help me. Okay. A little entertainment just to take your mind off the pressures of the world. We got a kid that should have gone with a band, but unfortunately, no band would hire him. So he figured he'll work alone. We would like to pump him up a little ego, you know what I mean? Because when you're dumped by Bob Chester and some of the guys like Bobby Byrne, you know, Boyd Rayburn, he has to go out alone. 
Let's make him feel at home. Tony Bennett, what do you say? What the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Not for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. Oceans and rivers enough to cross. Enough to last till the end of time. But the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Not for some, but for everyone. No, not just for some. What the world needs now is The shine enough to last till the end of time. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's just too little love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Not for some, but for everyone. No, not just for some. What the world needs. Well, this next song I'd love to sing for you. Stevie Wonder heard me sing and he said, Tony, this is your song. He said, sing it for everyone. And all those 20 million volunteers for the United Way, let's really give right now. For once in my life, I have someone who needs me. Someone I've needed so long For once I'm afraid I can go where life leads me Somehow I know Once I can touch what my heart used to dream of Long before I knew Someone warm like you Make all my dreams come true For once in my life I won't let sorrow hurt me Not like it's hurt me
I think if you had to pick a song that sort of is what this whole thing is about, you would probably have to sing something like this. You're nobody till somebody loves you. You're nobody till somebody cares. You know you may be the king and you may possess the world and a lot of gold. Gold won't bring you happiness when you're growing old. You know the world will be the same. You're never gonna change it. That's as sure as the stars that shine above. So find yourself somebody to love I said you're nobody till somebody loves you You ain't nothing till all other people care You know you may be the king and you may possess the world and tons and tons of gold If we may, oh, I got something for you, Jer. Yeah. Uh, before I do the next number, I got a golf ball because I know you're back into golf. I got a golf ball for you, and it's got your name on it, and that's all. Thank you. You that's had that it. made for me. I had that made for you. Just one. One for cock the ball. Why that couldn't you trade that in and get me a dozen? Jolly. Would you do me a favor, please? I knew he was going to get smart. I knew you are going to be smart. I s and I set you up for a ha, 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 ha. You went right for it, didn't you? There's, there it is. Oh, you are so... And all the balls are in there. All my I people. I know where the balls go, Charlie. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's beautiful. This is what you would get. Jerry was going to go to come to Hartford for the open, for my open, the thing that we've had on for four or five years. And the ping people were nice enough, and they, they put your decal on it and everything else. Oh, oh. No, there will be no practicing on my time here. <laughs> what are you crazy? A man's got to sing something. Oh, not the new clubs, Jerry! Not the new clubs! <laughs> Wait a minute, no, I'll get it. No kidding. Cycle, cycle! There we go. He's got my wire. You got my wire, Jerry. You got my wire. You got my wire. Uh, yeah, you are my fire. That's it. In the thing you're holding, you know. Would you take this? I don't do windows. <laughs> you notice the covers weren't Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to do a number for you, ladies and gentlemen, that I must, I, I would very happy to say, that gave me my fourth gold record. 
and I got a gold record here in America and a gold record in Europe on this number. And I'm so pleased because I did the theme for a friend of mine. And uh, the show was on for a long time. His show lasted longer than my three series that I had on television. Look out. The theme from Beretta. Don't go to bed with no price on your head. Don't do it. Don't walk the beat if you can't stand the heat. No. Don't do it. Keep your eye on the sparrows. When the going is You got even with me. It's a set up and you got even with me. All right. Get in here. Get in here. Uh, who hooked who? Well, you hooked me. You didn't know he was here. No. Do, do. Dr. Rhythm runs no. the clinic. <laughs> Dr. Rhythm runs. Uh, Thank you, Rob. Oh, listen. I don't think it's a smart idea to uh, sing or dance up here in the presence of the troops that have been uh, marching in front of you. Because my mother didn't raise no dunce, if you understand. Uh, but you got to give us some money. Now, I'm a little bit grumpy because I've been flying for 11 jillion hours. I ain't got no damn clothes. <laughs> I've been in El Paso for four months. Don't you know? And I ain't got no hair. <laughs> so I'm not going to plead with you. Just give me some damn money for these kids. Sam, got 19 rooms over at Caesars. <laughs> ain't got no clothes that'll fit me. <laughs> I got, I got it. <laughs> Besides that, he wears funny clothes. <laughs> If I wore them clothes, I'd be expecting to lay in a box with somebody putting some daisies on them, but it's all right. Now, where do I take all this? Well, I know where we take it. Uh, I'm glad that I'm here. And I'm glad I put in my time in show business. And I'm glad I did Beretta for four years. Now I know, listen here, don't applause because it ain't going to work out that way. What I'm saying is, you all watched Beretta for four years, and it didn't cost you a plug nickel. And I was up there putting on them old ladies' clothes and getting up three o'clock in the morning, running around doing all that stuff. Now, I got paid for it, that's true. But what I want you to do, all of you who watch the show, just get up off of one thin bean so I get some credibility in show business, because I don't sing, I don't dance, I don't do none of them things but if you pledge a dollar, then I'll feel like I've done something in the world beside, you know, steal your money and fool you. And when I go back to El Paso, I'm going on the tube down there, and you guys are going to cough up some money too. Please. Please. And uh, that's about all I got to say. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Jerry, I know you have been very kind to give me so much time, but I, you know where our relationship is. I do. It's on a one-to-one. -one. It's been close for many, many years. You've been an inspiration to me. I make no bones about that. I think if I've ever been considered funny, you have been the inspiration for the comedic qualities that I have. Uh, and you told me a long time ago, when you used to come to Ciro's back in the 50s and take notes for me and give them to me, you told me a lot of things that I'm still in the process of learning. But one thing you said to me, I don't think you, I, I can't remember it verbatim, but you said, 
and, and watch people and, and, and learn and get the best from them. And in the comedic sense of the word, there have been a lot of cats that have been around for the last new cats coming on the horizon. And I know how you feel about the new young talents of today. There's a man who's busted into stardom in the last five years that is a very special friend of mine. He truly is, in the moral sense and the physical sense, I feel my brother, spiritually as well. His name is Richard Pryor. Funny man. Funny man. And Richard wanted me to say in my own words, representing him, in the following. He's in Washington, D.C. He could not be here. He said, but... He said, you love that man. He said, I don't know him like you know him, but I love what he does for kids. He called me last night, this is the God's honest truth, and he said, I want you to tell him I'd like to donate a hundred thousand dollars. I ain't never heard of nothing like that before in my life. <laughs> now, I, I was going to come... Last time you talked to me. You know, but I, I swear to you, I, beside the, the graciousness of the man, he just, he is, beside that, that marvelous, nutty, off-the-wall comedy and the comedic sense that he has, he is one of the nicest human beings, and that's why we've been close for several years. But when he said that last night, I could not talk anymore. And I talked to his lady, and uh, I said, he'll have to call me tomorrow. He called me back in about 15 minutes, and he said, no, Sam, I'm sorry, I got emotional, and you did too. He said, but I mean it. I want you to tell the people, but tell Jerry on a one-to-one, -one, I like what he stands for, and I like what he's doing for kids, and that's what I really want to donate. I really would like to commit for $100,000 to the muscular we'll dystrophy. Thing. Love, so, you know, I know you will. Beautiful. But I just wanted to lay that on you. Thank and you. I told him I in would try passing, to... passing, you yeah, thought no, that maybe you just... No, I just thought I would try to handle it in the best way I could. So, you did very nice. For him. I'll give that to him. I'll give that to him. Get off my stage. Get off my stage. I tried to do the best I could, Richard, man. I tried to do it the way I think he would have liked to have been. Well, it's, it's all right, how I did. And I was doing you before hey, you Sam. did you. What is it? And I'll, and see if you can do me and say to them, timpani, and then hit it. All right. Yell, timpani. Listen, it is not what I wanted to do at this time. <laughs> but nonetheless... Hit it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, yeah, yeah. Ah. That's some kind of figure. I think that's Wayne Newton's salary for the year, ain't it? <laughs> 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 That's my man. I'm only joking. Two let me, shows let me do this. Let me do one song for you, and then I'll get off the, your, your podium. But I think that what I brought you, beside George and my, my talent, the thing from Richard and Bobby coming out was kind of an extra surprise. But again, I'm so proud of my man. Because I, I was going to give like a dollar ninety-eight cents in a prune Danish. You never seen. I was going to auction off one of my rings. You know. <laughs> The man just wiped me away. Let's do the, the closing number and stop the world. Because, you know, I'm the only one that does that now anymore. Yes. Can we, do, can we just uh, do that? Of course. Who's going right. to stop you? All right. All right. What kind of fool am I? Never fell in love. Is he alive? Yeah, the only one. 
that I have been thinking of. What kind of man is this? An empty shell, a lonely cell in which an empty heart must dwell. What kind of clown am I? What do I know of life? Why can't I cast away the mask of play and live my life? Why can't I fall in love like any kind of fool I am What kind of clown am I What do you George Rhodes, Lou Brown Talkers for all my guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Want to talk about a giant? Thank you very, very much. That's my main man. Boom. I like it better this way, sir. Where am I? Huh? Am, am I author? Yeah, oh, okay. What better way to close out the talent portion of this 13th than with the gift of talent of a beautiful and dynamic woman. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. Lola Falana.
indomable That's a pretty good way to close the talent portion of our program. And she's always there for us to show people. Can I have so some people? Jerry, just before you do that, I know you always like to make one dollar more than you did before. I never give up till the very last minute. We still have 20 minutes. Yeah, right. But I thought you might like to hear the drum one more time. Yeah, timpani. He won't call it a timpani. I never saw such a great Do it! Thank you, Ed. Oh, yeah, we got the buck. Okay. Oh, yeah. The phones are going to be open. It's going to go better than that. But we got the buck. Wherever you, you're going to sit, Bob. I thought, you, aren't you going to sit there? Oh, okay. I want you to know that uh, this is a very meaningful uh, day for us. Very meaningful because we've done some good work. If we didn't do anything more than to bring you the people that were treated with the plasmapheresis. If we didn't do anything more than that, I think that's going to make some inroads for my kids and for a lot of people that are in lots of trouble. That's terrific. My thanks to the Sahara Hotel, Doyle, Mathea, Ed Nigro, our love boy, Jack Eglash, Mary Larkin, who without Mary Larkin, you know, PBX telephones were dead. George Rojas, there's nobody better than that. My staff, Ruth Olnick and Elsie, Jerry Skidmore, Bob Harvey, Jack Flanders, Penny Rice, hardworking people. My manager, Joey Stabile, who is also our executive producer, West. Arthur Forrest, if you will please light that booth for me, Bud Keys, light it up for me, please, and will you please punch up on the Ida for There is my producer director, Arthur Forrest. <laughs> Hardest working most talented. Love you, Artie. You should be very proud. You do better each year. You work harder every year. And it's amazing how much can be learned by listening to a Jew in the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> to the entire staff, our television staff, cue cards, Larry, Harry, Stan and Keith, crew, Marcy Forrest and her whole talent staff, my TAV crew. I mean, we got cameramen and lighting men. I mean, we got guys that get involved. I mean, they shoot the show on all the cameras and lights and sound like it's really the Academy Awards and nobody really recognizes or knows the work they do. And we've got hundreds of people involved that care desperately, that work harder than any people I know. Maury Stevens and Robin, God bless them. My MDA staff, Bob Ross, Jerry Weinberg, Janet Friedlander, Bob Considine, that's my love family in New York, Mac Brewer, Skip Gladstone. I'm sorry to say that one of our family is gone. We had 
seven people in New York. And we lost Moose Delgado a short time ago. And uh, it's a tremendous loss uh, to lose one of your family. And uh, I think Moose is looking, because where he's at, he knows that we're, we're hurting bad without him. And uh, I don't know how he pulled it off without Moose, but uh, he sure was a superman. And we learned a lot of stuff. I could never have done what I did tonight if I didn't learn what integrity was from that man. If I didn't learn what it was to be a man with some kind of character. My God, what a gift that man gave all of us. And uh, Moose, if you're listening, and I'm sure you are, I know you're going to edit everything I've just said. But the guy that's going to cut your editing for you, <laughs> you're going to do what he tells you. We love you. and. Uh, John Lacano and Dick Rutherford, great security guys. My babysitters, Eddie Marazzo and Benny Benegas and Tommy Zappola, I could never have pulled this off unless they took care of me and played nine holes when I wanted to and quit when I wanted to. And my God, what I put those guys through. How super they were to put up with all of my nonsense. The love network of 213 stations, the corporate sponsors, the public, the people out there, the medical and scientific groups, my board of directors, my kids, my family, my special sons, what great sons I have. Supportive, who understood, along with my wife, Patty, that since last Labor Day, I haven't been home except for 31 days. A family has to support you. They have to stand behind what you believe and what you do. And you miss them sometimes, you know, and hotel rooms get tiring, but then you think about what you're doing and why, and it ain't all that bad. But they have to support you, and they have to understand. The Love Network in New York, my 13 super regional directors and all of my terrific regional, my district directors all over the country. Ed McMahon, you can hardly breathe on a stage like this for all of these hours unless you had someone like him pumping air into your lungs. You're quite a man, Ed, and I'll tell you this. We lost Moose, but boy, you're pretty close to the kind of a man that could step in his shoes. I didn't even know I was going to say that. But I'll tell Since you... Since you mentioned my name... Yeah. Now a Tim! Oh, yeah! Oh, I'd like that! Oh, yeah! I'd oh. like... not over yet. Oh, he's, he's, you know, he's really vicious. I could never breathe here either without my floor man. Okay. And I'm going to have to ask the lady to stand up because if you ever had strength, you know, the lady behind the man and all that you hear about? Well, for 34 years, she's taken an awful lot of nonsense from me. And once a year, she gets a pat on the head if I have the time. I have to pat that head because without it, I really would be drained empty my wife, Patty. She cries also when her laundry comes back. You're a nice broad. Nice broad. Now, I saved this for last because I don't want to finish on this depressing note, a man and a wife with all of that, you know, saccharine stuff. For 30 years, I have been arguing with a man. I have never, ever won an argument with this man. The nicest thing this man has ever said to me was, get the hell out of the way. And I want you to meet a man who for 30 years has been there for me, not only supportive with his talent and his love, but with the kind of criticism, a man who says, you got enough people telling you how swell you are. You need more like me telling, me you're, telling you you're a schmuck. And he does it all the time. But he's my musical director and the closest friend I have in the world, Lou Brown.
you will now be privileged to hear him screw up this last arrangement. <laughs> Go ahead, Louis. Let's see if we can get it right. To the DJ in New York, I'm going to try desperately to make it. When you walk through a storm, keep your chin up high. <laughs> Please remember that my moment of irreverence is only because I really need to do that, but my kids chose this a lot of years ago. It was theirs. They like it. They believe in it. And they make me believe it. And we go for it one more time. When you walk through a storm, keep your chin up high and don't be afraid of the dark at the end of the storm hold the note right there because i haven't choked up yet or if you haven't choked up and you've stopped oh, i wouldn't intrude on a moment moment like that Tim but Brady. i gotta hear the I Tim knew Brady. it Look at i this. swear i knew it Look at this. I knew it. man is a witch. I ain't gonna get through that damn thing. Let's just stand here and watch it. Can we get 20 more minutes on the air? He's gonna be right. I'm telling you, Bob, that witch, he's Bridie Murphy in, in slacks. <laughs> slacks? <laughs> Where's David? Where's my little brother? I mentioned everybody but David, David and Chad. Where are they? David. David. Chad. Here's Chad, right here. There's my, that's my other brother. Chad Everett. How could I forget? And there's my little brother. How could I forget my little brother? And Julie LaRosa. Okay, I'm ready now. Go ahead, Louis. Ed, leave me alone. Am I okay, Arthur? Put a light on in Arthur's booth so I can just see that I'm okay. Because we, we have... We're, yeah, well, we won't have time to... I mentioned everybody except Bud Keys, who doesn't do anything. <laughs> you know I'm serious. When you walk through a storm, keep your chin up high and don't be afraid of the dark don't be afraid of the tote is what i should say at the end of a storm is a golden star and the sweet silver song of a lark Walk on through the rain Though your dreams be tossed and blown Walk on, walk on With hope in your heart And you'll never
and we all love you. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Good night.